and right today I'm going to document for you the bend arc and the crown arc. It's pretty complicated with all the geometry and I could go into all that and it's about four pages of math but we're going to make it real simple for you. With this particular device um, there's a, it all is based off the center line of the boat. So the first thing we need to know is from deck mount to deck mount. Not the beam of the boat, deck mount to deck mount. For my Baja boat here it's 79 inches. So I need to know how many 15 inches are in that 79 inch. If you go 79 divided by 15 equals two and a quarter, roughly. We're going to round it to say five. So there are five 15 inches going across the boat. Now if you like a really heavy, heavy crown, change the 15 to 12. How many 12 inches do you have going across the boat? And then crown it really heavy, and you'll still come out to the right width when, when, you, when you crown them and bring them into the right width of the boat. But for us, we're, we're, we're doing a shallow crown because it is a, a, a Baja, it's a little bit faster boat. So again, a 79 inch from deck mount to deck mount. How many 15s? Five and a quarter, full round of five. Now we're gonna add a, a half an inch for every 15 in the beam. So five times 0.5 is two and a half. So now we have an extra two and a half inches. That's gonna make up for the crown that we lose when it shrinks. So the 79 inches, add the two and a half, we got 81 and a half. So when I go to bend the pipe, my center line that I'm gonna line up is gonna be at 81 and a half. The scale on the device will tell me where the center line is when we bend the crown down. So it's really complicated, but that's as simple as I can make it. You wanna know how many 15s are going across the beam, add a half an inch for every one of those 15s and add it to the original. And then when you crown, everything comes in. It'll make sense uh, during the rest of the video here. But you can rewind and play it again. Simple as I can make it. All right, here we are with our stainless steel poles. We've got them all cut down to size. They come in a 24 foot length now. Uh, so they're, they're monsters when I get them. So we've cut them down. We used to cut them on the chop saw with a particle blade. I still do sometimes. Um, but taking that out to the dock is really cumbersome. Um, for a long time, it was Vermont America that had the best blades for cutting stainless steel. But there's a new sheriff in town. These Rock Ridge blades, uh, get them at Fastenal. And they're pretty darn tough blades. I can get probably four, sometimes five cuts um, of this 7-8 um, stainless. I can get about five cuts out of a blade. And the Vermont Americas, I get about two. And then you have to pitch them. So, big shout out to Fastenal and Rock River. These uh, are tremendous blades for cutting stainless steel. And then, of course, just a file to take the burr off the end. And we use the old Dewalt cordless. Again, when we're when we're fabricating these out on the dock, it's nice to be able to cut stainless uh, without throwing sparks everywhere. The marina doesn't like that. So we have the two primary, secondary, and then the two intermediates. And then my drop pieces over here will be the two kickstands for the rear. And the little one is going to be, uh, we'll cut it in half, and uh, it'll be a set of travel poles so that he can get it down out of the wind. Um, sometimes they take these boats up to Havasu, or down to Lake Havasu, or up to Powell. Um, and you like to get the Bimini down out of the wind when they, when they travel with them. This is the Baja we're making the Bimini for. So let's get set up to, uh, to bend some frames here with the bend arc and the crown arc. Alright, here's our bend arc. There's a quick look at it here. It's just a clamp. It clamps it onto the block and then this roller will come around and make the bend for us and then of course that has to be on a shaft so it can slide away from the pole and we get the pole out of the jig. So that whole arm slides in and out. And you can see there's been a bunch of notes made on it. What's that one say? Come on. 
That one says, uh, add length for your crown, don't forget. That one says 14 inches at 90 degrees, meaning from that point where the blue tape starts, it'll add 14 inches if you bend it straight down 90 degrees. That's a 14 inch addition to the middle. And of course when you get out here looking at their scale, those are not inches but that's where you'll put your center mark is according to that scale and of course for me for my records I always take a piece of tape and put my measurement on it so I don't forget because these poles are a little expensive to be trashing them so I've got all mine here got all my centers marked all centers marked so we're gonna get up there and bend some poles Keep the legs in line or it'll bend them sideways. Still at 81 and a half. our supplier when they receive these they're in a big bundle and they can only get their forks so far apart on the forklift so they have a natural crown to them I don't know if you can see that so I use that to my advantage I will always with the crown already sagging but still hit my 81 and a half that I need to have for center
bend them at 86 degrees, they're not down, they're out. And when we put the crown in it, it's going to draw those in. The important thing to pay attention to here is to keep the legs up against the guide as we're rolling through. Or you'll get your legs will, will do a twist. And you can get them back, but it just, it can warp the tube and it just it looks bad. So if you can, always try to keep it flat when it's going through and getting its crown. It's an incredibly easy device to use. Some of the bigger poles, I need help uh, rolling them through. Again, make sure everything tight up again, so then just roll on through. And even there, we still get a little bit. Again, you can bend them out um, when we get out of the boat. It is nice to have it a little bit in. I'll be lopping off probably six or eight inches off of these. One more. And we'll, uh, we'll gather up some, some fittings and, and get it uh, cut down to the right size and get it on the boat. All right, here we're going to start with our primary bow. This will be the main bow that's going to lean back on the kickstands. And what we need is a five foot leg. So from the bottom of the bend, you can actually feel where the, the, the pipe is being crushed as we bent it around the corner and you, as soon as that, that crush is done and it's back to full size pipe, that's where I lay the tape measure. We're going to come down five feet. If you have a five foot leg, it makes about an eight and a half or a nine foot bimini, uh, which most of the boats, that covers the whole uh, cockpit, which is really what they're after here in the middle of the desert. So again, I'm going to double check. Right there where you can feel that, that it's not crushed anymore. And I got my tape locked at, at five feet. Then I'll come down here and put a piece of tape. And it's cut the tape off. So I'll cut on this side of the tape's edge so the tape just falls in the, in the bucket. Same thing on the other side. Lock at five feet, 60 inches. Find the bottom of the bend. And that's where that five foot goes. And at the bottom, put a piece of tape to cut off. Of course, I always love to double check, measure twice, cut once, we're after 60 inches, under 60, because this is really subject to where you feel the, the bend ends. See, that was a little off there. That's acceptable. Yeah. 
Cutting on this side of the tape so the tape falls in the bucket. off or the, the hardware won't go on. so we can start building this bimini top. All right, let's take a minute to talk about hardware. Um, you can go to biminis.com and all these other cheapo websites and buy a bimini for a couple hundred bucks. And they will come with these plastic deck mounts, plastic jaw slides, plastic eye ends, okay? And if you're on a little pond or a small lake where you don't get tremendous winds those are fine they work good um, the aluminum poles these are these are aluminum and then these are the crimped ends the only thing that holds that on there is that crimp so again if you're on a small lake um, or a lake that doesn't get a lot of heavy winds these are fine these work good but here on Lake Mead I've got a box of this stuff um, the winds here surprise people they pick up in a moment's notice and they just tear things to pieces um, so we've got a whole box of this stuff that's just rejects and, and, and miscellaneous this is and that's. Uh, we save them because people come in looking for little bibs and bobs. Uh, so we have a box of that stuff we let people pick through because it's no good to us. When we build our bimini tops, we use the high quality hardware. They call these the humpback ions. It's got two set screws, not one. And if, let me pull one out here. Pull one out here. So they call them the humpbacks. Let me see if I can see that. See the extra material up here where the set screws go through. So you've got extra threads to help lock them down. And there's two set screws. Sometimes on the uh, the bigger vessels and the uh, really large biminis, we'll drill out one or we'll uh, we'll take the set screw out, drill it in, and pop rivet it. Uh, just to keep them on the boat because they they you know, the bigger you make them the more wind they catch So what I like to do is lay out everything I need for this boat So I start up here at the top these would be the the kickstands uh, For the short poles and long poles. So I need uh, four eyes and two jaws and then coming down here these would be for the intermediates so I'd have two jaws and two eyes on each side and then down here at the bottom uh, this would be the primary to the secondary bow again I need a jaw slide and an eye end and so this is where we start the assembly I'll get going on this one get the hardware on this uh, the primary and then we'll bring the secondary over and it's going to be trimmed three inches shorter than this one but uh, we'll show that shortly Again, I'm, I'm going to say, because here is where I get to decide. This is going to be the top, or it's going to splay open this way. So that would be the bow, this would be the stern. 
so I want the screw from the inside. I don't want to be hanging outside of the boat to get to the screw if I need to take the bimini off. I want all the screws on the inside of the boat facing out. So we know this one's going to be facing down. It's going to be the kickstand for the main support. It goes about there. Again, orient the screw so it's facing inside the boat. Alright, that will be the, the kickstands. Now we go to the intermediate pole, which will hinge this way. Again, the table is the stern. We want it to hinge up. So I need the screw, the, the, the rig facing up and the screw facing in. It sucks when you have to tear it all apart and do it again. There we go. That's the intermediate. To the other side and then down at the bottom. This will be for the secondary boat. Faces up with the screw to the inside. cut down to 12 inches. I want to get them too tight because I may have to move them a little bit as we go to put them on. And now to help with nesting, if this makes any sense, we're going to flip these, oh, this, this uh, intermediate bow over. I want the humpback to face the other pole so that when it splays open, he can get to the screws from the top. Plus, it does help him nest better. So I'm going to flip it over. 
before I attach it to the jaw slots. get it to nest correctly, or you don't know where to set this, line your bars up at the top. And that's where it goes. Because again, when you, when you put the boat on it, everything has to fold nice and neat. So all these poles have to line up with each other, because there's going to be a whole lot of canvas in between them. So that's how you know when you fold everything back together, all these poles have to line up with each other. That's how you know the height of these jaw slides for your intermediate and your secondary bow. Everything has to nest right on top of each other. All right, one more thing we can put on this one would be the... Uh, the eye ends for the bottom, where it's actually going to mount to the boat. And then we'll take the primary bow and set it aside and build the secondary bow. This one we need to be three inches shorter than the other bow. So the other bow is 60 inches. And this one we're going to bring down to 57. And find the bottom of the bend. And that's your 57 inch. And then mark uh, tape to cut off. All right, being the secondary bow, we only need one set of jaw slides for the intermediate bow in the front. And we're going to say that the table is the bow now, 
so the stern. So with these facing up with the screw facing in. And then we'll flip it over when we put it on the primary. Up facing in. Our intermediate be marked at 14 inches. Secondary and an intermediate. All right, there we go. The primary and the secondary are built. Now we'll marry the two together. primary poles back on the table. So again, the table represents the stern of the boat. This is the primary. So we need to lay the secondary on it so that the two intermediates face each other. So I've already flipped this one around. And this is 
where it gets to be a bit of a mess. But when we made this one three inches shorter than the other, it pretty much wants to nest automatically. We will bump this up about a finger or two, depending. Maybe not at all on this one. Just about all nest good enough to get a boot around them. So let's tighten those down. to go out to the boat. All right, we have it on the boat. It was a simple process. Uh, thoroughly cover the boat with furniture pads so it's not too scratch it. For an older Baja, this is a nice looking boat. Um, it doesn't have a bunch of scratches and stuff on it, so I am not the one that's gonna do it. There's some scratches on the bottom, but like I said, it's an older boat. So basically we just came over to it with the, uh, the legs in the air, laid it down on the swim step, and then slowly laid the legs down until they came up to the deck mounts where we got the pins in. So now I've taken some clamps and put just to spread the bars apart so that I could get my straps on them. And I've just got some, some webbing, two inch webbing, that ah, might be inch and a half, and the pins. I just pin it all together so that it's uh, adjustable. And we'll, um, we've got straps here to the cleat to act as the rear support. Um, I've got straps up in the front. So we'll go ahead and, and pull it up and see how close we are. And then we'll get it adjusted so it's ni nice and flat across the top. We'll find a place to put the camera.
ready to lay some fabric across the top and get to market. Two fingers, two fingers, looks good at the front and back. We've lowered the nose of the trailer to put the boat in more of the attitude that it sits when it's in the water. Uh, we checked with the boat owner and he said this is about the attitude it sits. So the bend and top will be nice and flat when it sits on the water. So, let's get some canvas and uh, get to fabricating. 